Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Let us go through some Crohn's disease related topic MCQs. We hope you will find this useful. So let's begin. Question 1. A 28 year old man complains of feeling unwell for the past 4 months. He has been having generalized abdominal pain and loose stools intermittently. He is having around 8 loose stools per day and also notices some blood in his stools occasionally. On examination, the patient has right iliac fossa tenderness. What is the most likely diagnosis? A. Irritable bowel syndrome. B. Diverticulitis. C. Inflammatory bowel disease. Or D. Colon cancer. Let's go over the options again. A. Is a diagnosis of exclusion. Blood in stools is not a symptom of irritable bowel syndrome. In diverticulitis, patients present with rectal bleeding, constipation or diarrhea. However, abdominal, abdominal tenderness is on the left iliac fossa and not the right. Inflammatory bowel disease presents as chronic diarrhea with abdominal pain and weight loss. Disease is generally intermittent in nature and more specific symptoms manifest depending if it is Crohn's or ulcerative colitis. Colonic cancer generally presents with change in bowel habit that is either diarrhea or constipation or alternating diarrhea and constipation. Increased frequency of diarrhea is, is generally suggestive of another pathology. Therefore, the answer is C, inflammatory bowel disease. Question 2. A 30-year-old man presents with back pain. On detailed history, he mentions that he has been having diarrhea intermittently since one year now but never been investigated for it. He also experiences abdominal pain on and off which resolves by itself. He seeks medical help because of the back pain which is ongoing for a couple of weeks now. His back stiffness causes him to wake up in the middle of the night. On examination, he has aphthous ulcers and perianal skin tags. What is the most likely diagnosis? The following are his blood tests. Hemoglobin 90, low, WBC 15, elevated, CRP 50, elevated, ESR 25, elevated, X-ray spine showing a bamboo spine. The options are A. Psoriatic arthritis, B. Seronegative spondyl arthropathy, C. Mechanical back pain, or D. Gout. After ulcers and perianal skin tags, along with the chronic intermittent diarrhea and abdominal pain, are consistent with Crohn's disease. The blood investigations show a low hemoglobin consistent with anemia of chronic disease. An elevated CRP and ESR correspond to disease activity. He's probably having a flare right now. There is an increased incidence of ankylosing spondylitis in patients with inflammatory bowel disease. Ankylosing spondylitis is 10 to 20 times more common in patients with IBD. An X-ray spine showing a bamboo spine that is a complete fusion of vertebral bodies by marginal syndesmophytes. This confirms the diagnosis of B. Seronegative spondyl arthropathy. The patient is most likely has ankylosing spondylitis. Question 3. A 35-year-old man presents to the ED with intermittent diarrhea, abdominal pain and weight loss. He feels very unwell today due to the same symptoms. On examination, he appears moderately dehydrated, tachycardic and febrile with a temperature of 38 degrees Celsius. He has oral ulcers, perianal skin tags and right-sided abdominal tenderness. He was admitted and workup has been sent. Deep ulcers and skip lesions seen on colonoscopy. Histology shows transmural granulomatous inflammation involving the ileocecal junction. What is the single most likely diagnosis? A. Diverticulitis. B. Ulcerative colitis. C. 
सी क्रोन्स डिजीज और डी बाओ कैंसर द क्लिनिकल प्रेजेंटेशन एंड कलोनोस्कोपी फाइंडिंग्स आर इन कीपिंग विद क्रोन्स डिजीज On colonoscopy, deep ulcers, skip lesions, and a cobblestone mucosa is visible. On histology, a uh, Crohn's disease uh, would show transmural infiltration with lymphocytes, clusters of infl- inflammatory cells, which are called granulomas, without necrosis. Um, whereas uh, ulcerative colitis would generally show decreased goblet cells on histology granulomas are infrequent and crypt abscesses are common so the answer is c crohn's disease question 4 a 16 year old presents with chronic intermittent diarrhea and abdominal pain She has lost 6 kg in the last 2 months unintentionally. She was admitted and blood sent showed a raised WBC count, CRP, ESR and fecal calprotectin. A colonoscopy has been performed and a diagnosis of Crohn's has been made on clinical features supporting lab investigations and colonoscopy. She has no drug allergies. What is the single most appropriate management? A. Prednisolone. B. Mercaptopurin. C. Budesonoid. D. Mesalazine. Let's go over the options once again. Glucocorticosteroids such as prednisolone is the first line of management in treating acute flares of Crohn's disease. B mercaptopurin is used for maintenance of remission. C budesonoid is given when conventional glucocorticosteroids such as prednisolone or hydrocortisone or methylprednisolone are contraindicated or not tolerated. D aminosalicylates such as mesalazine or sulfasalazine can be given when conventional glucocortic Uh, gl- glucocorticosteroids uh, or budesonoid are contraindicated or not tolerated so the answer here is a prednisolone question 5 a 40 year old man with a history of crohn's disease presents to the hospital with fever and worsening abdominal pain he is having five episodes of diarrhea daily On examination the patient is febrile 38.5 tachycardic 102 uh, beats per minute respiratory rate is 22 and BP is 120 by 80 he has right sided lower quadrant tenderness and guarding on palpation a mass can be felt his labs are as follows hemoglobin 125 low wbc 26 elevated platelets 500 elevated CRP 200 elevated urea 15 elevated creatinine 100 normal eGFR more than 90 normal what is the single most appropriate investigation a colonoscopy b ct abdomen c fecal calprotectin or d proctoscopy let's go over the options once again the patient seems to be having a flare of his disease suggested by the raised crp and platelet count and currently having a complication of crohn's disease he may be developing an abscess suggested by the palpable right lower quadrant mass patient is also septic and dehydrated um, as we know he's having fever tachycardia a raised wbc and raised urea which suggests which suggests this patient is uh, already diagnosed to have crohn's disease therefore a colonoscopy will not benefit the patient here b a ct abdomen will locate the abscess and help decide if further intervention such as a percutaneous or surgical drainage is needed depending on the size of the abscess a fecal calprotectin helps identify Uh, if patient is having a flare and can be and can be more useful to differentiate between inflammatory bowel disease from in from irritable bowel syndrome 
Uh, D. A proctoscopy will not help in identifying the cause of patient's current symptoms. So the answer is B. CT abdomen. Question 6. A 35-year-old lady known to have Crohn's disease is presented with foul-smelling feculent discharge from her vagina. What is the most likely structure involved in the formation of the fistula with the vagina? A. Rectum B. Sigmoid colon C. Ilium or D. Cecum In Crohn's disease, the most common structure frequently involved is the ilium. The most common structure that forms a fistula with the vagina is the rectum. However, in Crohn's disease, rectum itself is rarely involved. So the answer is A. Rectum. Question 7. A 15-year-old with a history of Crohn's disease presents with an acute flare of his disease. This is his first presentation after 12 months of being in remission without treatment. He is having abdominal pain and 5 episodes of diarrhea per day. Which of the following can be used as monotherapy to induce remission? A. Mercaptopurin B. Mesalazin C. Methotrexate or D. Azathioprine Let's go over the options again. A. Mercaptopurin cannot be used as monotherapy to induce remission. B. Mesalazine can be used to treat flare of disease if conventional glucocorticosteroids or budesonoid are contraindicated. It can be used as monotherapy if patient is having mild to moderate Crohn's disease. Since prednisolone or budesonide is not given in the options, mesalazine would be the next treatment of choice. C. Methotrexate cannot be used as monotherapy to induce remission. D. Azathioprine cannot be used as monotherapy to induce remission. So the answer is B. Mesalazine. Question 8. A 30 year old girl presents with abdominal pain, diarrhea, and weight loss. She has had these symptoms for the last one year and only recently sought medical help. She has been referred to the gastroenterologist for a colonoscopy that shows cobblestone mucosa with deep ulcers and skip lesions. When she presented to the gastroenterologist, she has been having 7 episodes of diarrhea per day, abdominal pain and has lost 7 kgs in the past 5 months. She has no drug allergies. What is the single most appropriate management? A. Mesalazin B. Budesonoid C. Prednisolone or D. Mercaptopurin Let's go over the options once again. A. Mesalazin can be used if conventional glucocorticosteroids or budesonoid is contraindicated. It can be used if patient has mild to moderate Crohn's disease. Budesonoid can be used if conventional good glucocorticosteroids is not tolerated or contraindicated. C. Prednisolone, um, oral prednisolone or IV hydrocortisone or methyl prednisolone is the first line uh, of management for treating flare of Crohn's disease. D. Mercaptopurin is used for maintenance of remission. So the answer is C. Prednisolone. Question 9. A 30 year old has had a history of having on and off abdominal pain and diarrhea since 10 weeks. In the last two months, he has lost 4 kgs. Patient has been seen by a gastroenterologist and on examination is having right iliac fossa tenderness. The labs are as follows, hemoglobin 100, low, WBC 16, elevated, platelet 500, elevated, CRP 100, elevated. What is the single most appropriate investigation that would lead to a diagnosis? A. Colonoscopy, B. Proctoscopy, C. Barrier D. Flexible sigmoidoscopy.
A. Colonoscopy will help visualize the terminal ilium. Right direct fossa tendinous suggests that the patient is having ileitis. B. Proctoscopy will not help because it cannot go far enough to look at lesions caused by Crohn's disease. C. Barium enemas are not the first line for investigation of Crohn's. Barium enemas are reserved for when strictures in the colon do not allow colonoscopies to pass. D. Flexible sigmoidoscopy will not reach far enough to visualize the terminal ileum. So the answer is A. Colonoscopy. Question 10. A 20-year-old female presents with intermittent chronic diarrhea, abdominal pain and weight loss. On examination, she has oral aphthous ulcers and perianal skin tags. What is the single most likely sign to be seen on barium enema? A. Cobblestone appearance. B. Loss of postural markings. <coughs> or C. Cantor's string sign. Or D. Corkscrew sign. Let's go over the options once again. A. Cobblestone appearance is pathognomonic for Crohn's disease. However, it is only seen on endoscopy. B. Loss of postural markings is pathognomonic for ulcerative colitis. C. Cantor's string sign, rose thorn ulcers and fistulae are seen on small bowel enema in Crohn's disease. D. Corkscrew sign is seen uh, in midgut wall venous. So the answer is C, Cantor's string sign. Question 11. Which of the following is least associated with Crohn's disease? A, fistulae, B, cobblestone pattern, C, crypt abscesses, D, Cantor's string sign, E, deep ulcers, or F, rose thorn ulcers? All except crypt abscesses is associated with Crohn's disease. Crypt abscess is seen on histology in ulcerative colitis. So the answer is C. Crypt abscesses. Question 12. A 44 year old lady has presented with chronic diarrhea and abdominal pain. The colonoscopy and biopsy done confirms Crohn's disease. She takes 15 units of alcohol per week and 15 cigarettes per day. Which of the following is the single most appropriate intervention that can help reduce disease flare? A. Mesalazine B. Budesonide C. Reduce smoking D. Reduce drinking Let's go over the options once again. Mesalazine is an aminosalicylate and given to patients when glucocorticosteroids and budesonoid are contraindicated or not tolerated in order to induce remission. Mesalazine is not used for maintenance of remission. Budesonoid is used to induce remission when conventional glucocorticosteroids are contraindicated or not tolerated. C. Reducing smoking helps reduce disease flare in Crohn's disease. D. Reduced drinking has no effect on Crohn's disease. So the answer is C. Reduce smoking. Thank you guys for taking the time out to listen. If you found this helpful, kindly subscribe to our channel and share the video so that others can benefit from it too. All the very best, we can do this together.